and show you some new things about creating our packages in 2018. So we are going to start uh, using a lot of point and click interfaces and also to use this package. So we're going to try to get you up uh, and running in about five minutes. So we're going to be in our studio and we're going to say file new project. <clears throat> we're going to tell it it is an R package whenever that pops up. So let's say it's a new directory, R package. All right, we're going to put a package name in here. Remember, there's no underscores. You can put periods. I tend to put everything in lowercase. So let's say tester. You should check to see if your name is available, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So let's create the project, and I'm going to initialize it with the Git repository because I'm going to eventually put this on GitHub. So before we even kind of move forward with the package, let's see if this package name was available. So there is a pack, there is a package already called available. And you can say the main function in that is available name and let's say tester. So this is going to be whatever you named your <clears throat> package. So the idea for this is it will look through Bioconductor, CRAN, GitHub, and some other pages like you know, uh, Urban Dictionary. So if you're making a package name which has some unintended meanings behind it that you may not know about, it does some searching for you to check it out. So this is what comes up. So for example, uh, this is talking about testes. So we know that testing is a little bit different. Uh, so it's not available on CRAN, it's not available on Bioconductor, and it's not available on GitHub. So that's not a great example of what we should do. Also, Urban Dictionary gives us some indications why tester may not be for us. So, but for now, for all intents and purposes, at this point, we are going to keep it with the tester package. Uh, but again, if you see this, you should know that you should change your name and doing this before it's on GitHub is a lot easier than afterwards. Okay, so what we're going to do is keep the hello world function for now, but we're going to add some arguments to it. I'm going to take out this head documentation. We're going to see we have a hello function. All right, we would change this to whatever we wanted to, uh, our function to be named, and let's say x. So let's say uh, we want to paste together hello spade or paste x. This is the world. And we'll use paste zero so that we don't have any spaces and we just want this to print out. Okay, so now let's look in the files. So this is what's initialized. So if you can't see these hidden files, then you may have to change some settings on your computer. If you are on a Mac, command shift period will show you hidden files on there. So let's look at the constituents of a package. So we're not going to talk about the namespace just yet but we see there's a man folder with a hello.rd. This stands for R documentation. We have a description file that says the package name. What is it? What does the package do in title case? So tests new R packages. So this has to be in title case. So everything that is not a standard article in the English language should be capitalized. Also, the author is me. And I'm going to put a random email in there and I'm also the maintainer. I will show you in a minute how to add multiple authors in here and do a little bit different of a connotation than the author maintainer. So here provides functionality for my package. These functions are for use only with John Michelli and no other people. So again, this should be written as prose. Everything should end in a period. It's not capitalized in title case, such as the title. You also should put a license in here. Uh, I tend to use the GPL, the new public uh, license two or three, and I'm going to save that. So the other thing we have here. So what the big things of a package are. Let's, let's try to install it and restart. Okay, so I want to build, install, and restart. What that'll do is it'll install the tester package, and I want to show you what the RD will look like. So if I go to hello, this is what we got. All right, we have the hello uh, help file. So it says hello world, this is the description, and that comes from the RD file. Now, what we're going to use is Roxygen, which is a way to have the documentation and the code in one place. So we're going to change a few defaults in the RStudio project. 
So we're going to go to Configure Build Tools, and we're going to click Generate Documentation with Roxygen. And this is going to say, use Roxygen to generate everything, and I tend to click all these buttons. So also, when we check a package, we're going to check it as CRAN. So it's double dash as dash CRAN. This uh, allows for some additional checks rather than the standard checking of your package, just to make sure it's a little bit stable. So now that we got this, what we want to do is two things. We want to create a Roxygen file to automatically create this RD file, this documentation file, anytime we recompile the package. Now, RStudio's got some great functionality. If you go to code, insert Roxygen skeleton with this very long kind of shortcut, it'll put this in there. So this is the title. So the way these Roxygen headers work, you can either do title and description. So you'll see uh, when I have things in here and uh, you hit tab after the at symbol, it does tab completion, which is really nice. But if you don't put title and description in there, then you can just say my hello world function. What this will do is this will create a the title and description to be the exact same thing. So now the other arguments in here, which are called Roxygen directives, they have a pound, an apostrophe, a space, and then an at symbol, and this stands for parameter. So this is a per argument of your function. So X is the name of the person to say hi to. Return indicates what is the value that is output from that function. So here it's just the output from print. So here, I'll show you exactly what this does. Code will make the uh, text font in the actual help file look like code. Link will allow you to click on the uh, button or the word print, and it'll go to the help file for print. Then also, if you don't have any examples, take this out. Otherwise, we're going to say, hello, John. We can also do, don't run. Hello. Okay, so what I'm doing here, this is an example that will get checked and tested when we check our package. Here, the directive for not running is slash don't run and then a parentheses. Note, you cannot have a space between the parentheses and don't run. You cannot have it like that. So, we're going to save this. We are going to clean and rebuild. So what I want to show you, back in the files area, you will see uh, some things here. It says, warning, the existing hello.rd file was not generated by Roxygen 2 and will not be overwritten. The existing namespace file was not generated by Roxygen 2 and will not be overwritten. So the way our studio sets up some of the defaults uh, isn't maybe so great if you're using Roxygen. So we're gonna click this and delete the man fold, uh, the hello uh, world documentation. We're also gonna delete the namespace. Okay, so let's hit clean and rebuild. All right, and we see the namespace was automatically generated. And if we click the man folder again, here is the documentation, and we will look at the help file in a minute. Also of note, this directive right here, export. So you export functions from a package that you want the user to be able to use. Sometimes you might document functions, even though you don't want the user to have them, you document them for the other developers, or you document for yourself a little bit later to say, you know, what is this file actually bringing in and what is it outputting? So if you don't have export here, then it's not going to be available to the user. Since we have it, I can say hello and it is actually available to be used. Also, this export will match up with this export. So in the, in the namespace file, you are really talking about importing and exporting functions. Functions you import from other packages that you want to be able to use, and functions you are going to export from your package that you want users to be able to have access to when they run your package. Okay, so now this is a very simple package, nothing crazy going on, so let's check it. I'm going to show you how to read kind of the output here. So what it's going to do is go through... Um, a whole bunch of different things. It's going to check to see whether the package can be installed. It's going to check to make sure the namespace is correct, all this kind of stuff. 
and it's going to run your examples. So at the bottom, if everything's good, you'll get zero errors, zero warnings, zero notes. Now, that is a basic package. All right, it totally works. It will not probably be accepted to CRAN because it is not sufficiently kind of necessary. Uh, it only prints out hello world. Um, and also, you know, it just doesn't really do anything of note. So if you want to start a new function, for example, I tend to have the function names to be the names of my files. And let's say I want to make a printer function. Again, nothing very interesting. So all this is going to do is literally print out what X is. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to call it the exact same name. You don't have to do this. You can have multiple functions in the same file. But the nice thing about our studio is that if you are looking for a specific function and you have like five or ten functions in there, and you're like, oh, I only want to edit this one, you can type in this go to location area and it will not only search the file names, it'll also search and go to exactly where that function is defined. So for example, let's say I just made that empty. Here, I have the printer function. I'm going to insert a Roxygen skeleton, all that fun stuff, and I'm going to save this. And let's say now I want to find the printer function. If I go there, you'll see that it actually brings the cursor exactly to where that function is defined. Very nice functionality. Um, very good. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this back over. All right, now that is the majority of the easy stuff for the package. Now there is another package out there that is very, very useful other than DevTools uh, for creating packages. So one of them is use this. So use this has a bunch of use functionality that allows you to adapt things in your package and make it a lot easier to create it. So let's see, there's what license do you want to build? Do you want to use at there, which we'll talk about in a minute? I am going to do a few things. I'm going to uh, create a readme file and I'm going to make it an R markdown document. So I'm going to go to use underscore readme underscore rmd. What it will do, so it's writing out a file, it's adding it to the build ignore so when you actually build this package and create it and send it off the CRAN it won't be included in there necessarily and then it allows you to modify it. It also puts this git hooks pre-commit stuff in there. So We'd say the goal of tester is, and generally I copy the description area to the readme, adapting it a little bit, so it is to provide functionality for my package. Right, so what it does is it gives you a little bit of links for the CRAN, and it uh, has a little bit of basic boilerplate stuff in there that you can use. So you can save it and knit it, and it says it's going to be a GitHub document, because usually that's where these things are hosted, and you will be able to push this up and actually visualize it on GitHub. So, but otherwise, this is what it would look like. So tester, blah, 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 here's the goals, here how you install it from CRAN, here's a basic example, here are some plots. And it's a general, just standard on markdown document. Okay, so before, um, the, the one thing I'll say, if we have set up Git correctly, we can go to version control commit. So we can add everything. So first commit, and you can commit things to this git repository. Note, nothing is here for pull or push because we haven't set up a GitHub remote repository to send anything to. In order to do that, you should be able to say, use GitHub, uh, organization, private, protocol, credentials, auth token. So if you don't have things set up, you might have to do uh, some credentials setting up here. Also, I tend to use the HTTPS protocol versus SSH. There are reasons for that. We don't necessarily have to go into them. But if I do this, what it's going to do is create a GitHub repository and push things up. So this also is going to ask you a question. You have to choose yes. It is not always the first selection. It's going to create it. It added some links to the description, which I'll look at in a minute. And then it opened that web page to show me what is in there. Just pretty, pretty nice. So now if we go to description, it added a URL for the GitHub repository and a bug reports area automatically. So that's what this test this, or, or sorry, use this package really has a lot of power to do. I will add more functionality and more discussion points in probably the next uh, video. Thanks.